Okay, how to increase your long run. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to safely increase the distance or the time of your long run. I'm gonna to talk to you about pacing strategies. I'm gonna to talk to you about how to fuel your run both before and during the run. I'm also gonna to talk to you about mental strategies. How do you get through it when you're out there on your own on a Sunday for two hours at a time or even more? And I'm also gonna to talk to you about how to recover optimally after a run and what that actually looks like to cool down and to then get something inside of you which is going to enhance your recovery. Okay, so how to increase safely the distance. Now, you need to think about your starting point, and this is where a lot of people go wrong. They'll grab something off the internet, a training plan, and it will say week one, your long run is 22 kilometers. The last time they did a 22 kilometer long run was five years ago, or more than six months ago. So you need to think about recently, when was the longest I ran? and how long did it take me? If that was 10 kilometers and it took you 70 minutes, I would work off 70 minutes as being a long run. And I would work on, yeah, like we always hear, we always hear increase by 10% per week. It's roundabout, right? But what I would add to that is I would go off time rather than distance. If we're gonna start running specific long runs and we're gonna add segments which are faster, and then we're gonna do progressive long runs which get gradually faster throughout the run, that type of run will take more out of you than a long, slow distance run. So if you think about it in terms of time on our feet and about increasing the long run gradually by 10% of the time that we're out there, that's gonna put you in a much safer and better position to move forward with a long run much more optimally. Pacing strategies. Now, it depends on the run. I'd always suggest if somebody's new to running long or if they've all of a sudden got a goal, whether it's a 10K, a half marathon, a marathon, or an ultra marathon, we gradually build in up. We'd start with long, slow distance. And I'd like to do that for the first two or three weeks. So we get to a point where we can run an hour and 15, an hour and 30 or more, depending on what you've previously done or recently done, so that we can then start to add something on top of that. Then we'll start to get specific. And that might be a long run with some intervals in the middle, which are around at tempo or threshold, whatever you want to call it, but roundabout sort of race pace, depending on what the race that we're aiming for, or a little bit less. So we're getting used to, within a long run, running comfortably at or around the pace that we're going to be running in the marathon or the race that we're training towards. And then we've got things like progressive long runs. And that might look like, one of my favorite to do is literally 24 kilometers to eight kilometers, 20% slower than race pace, middle eight kilometers, 10% slower than race pace, and then the last eight kilometers race pace. What that does for me, it gives me a really good block of 24 kilometers where I'm running at or around race pace. I have to stay focused, have to stay concentrated because it's difficult for me to execute that, especially if you throw into that factors like heat and humidity, maybe the weather is off or maybe you're not feeling great, but it's important to execute those sessions consistently over the weeks. The biggest win for you is going to be before and during nutrition. And a lot of people overlook this. And as human beings, we like doing things the way that we've always done them. So I'll often have a conversation with a runner who's hit a plateau and doesn't understand how to get through it. Or you'll often hear this from runners, I get to 30K in the marathon or I get to 35K in the marathon, and then it's all out war to get to the finish line. It doesn't need to be like that. And I'll try to explain why this is probably my, my favorite topic in terms of how you can move past that plateau towel and really sort of not just enjoy your running more but run faster and enjoy and run faster in the rest of your training as well we need to take care of the breakfast that's before the run and the way that we do that is we work back from the goal so if we say okay i'm running london marathon or you're running sort of bupa manchester 10k and before the run it starts at nine o'clock and therefore i'm going to get up at 6 30 i'm going to have porridge why because i always have porridge and it seems to work or somebody will wake up and have avocado on toast or peanut butter on bread, whatever it might be. And those are the wrong foods. So it's highly like fatty foods that are gonna take longer to digest and they're not gonna sit well in your stomach. Essentially, that morning breakfast is about settling your stomach. The 
the food that you've had and, and the drinks that you've had in the two, three days leading up to the race are going to be more important than that, that, that morning breakfast. But you can get that breakfast wrong. So if you have a lot of peanut butter or something like avocado, something fatty can cause problems with the stomach during the race, which is going to put you off your pacing. It's going to put you off your time and it's going to take you away from your goal. Easiest thing for me, I will always advocate, is I was the guy who did have porridge. And I realized that with trial and error, I needed to have that three hours before. So if I'm gonna start warming up for London Marathon at 8.45, ready to start at nine o'clock, I think it starts at 10, you get what I mean, then I wanna be up three hours earlier and eating that porridge pretty much as soon as I wake up, which is irregular for me. And then I'd have to also do that in the training. So I'd have to wake up three hours before my training, then have porridge, get used to having that breakfast, and then do it on race day. An easier way to do it for me is fruit. Fruit metabolizes really quickly and becomes bioavailable for you really quickly. So you get that energy and you get maybe, if it's bananas, you get the potassium and the minerals that are gonna help you with you know, making your muscles work in the best possible way. What it also does is allows you to have that breakfast way later. So now what I do is I just blend three to five bananas in water and just drink that an hour or 45 minutes before I'm about to warm up. So if I'm thinking London and it starts at 10, I think, then I'm working back from there and I'm having that at eight o'clock or 8.15, if that means I'm staying somewhere else in London, I'm blending those drinks, uh, I'm blending that drink, I'm taking it with me and I have it exactly 45 minutes or an hour before, that's what I do. What it also does, if you keep that breakfast consistent, is it allows you, wherever you are in the world, whether you're in Barcelona, South America, whether you're in America, whether you're in the Maldives, they're gonna have bananas. And so it makes it really easy for you to have a consistent breakfast. A lot of people psychologically will get completely put off if they've not got access to their pre-race food. And it's just a case of planning. What do I want the nights before? Sweet potato, do I have access to that when I get there? Yes, okay, we're good to go. And sweet potato is a sweet potato pretty much wherever you go in the world, exactly the same with a banana. What you then need to do in order to really get the most out of that pre-race breakfast is have it and get used to having it before your interval session on the Wednesday and before your long run on the Sunday. What that's gonna do is get your body more energized, which is obviously great for your runs, great for your faster running, and great for your longer run. It's gonna prepare the stomach to take, have the breakfast whilst you're running faster, and have the breakfast when you're gonna be running longer. Really, really important. Another important factor is it's going to start with allowing you to break the muscles down less or less muscle breakdown because your body is more fueled. You topped up your glycogen stores and your muscles in your liver. So you're not tapping into them and wasting them as, quick, uh, as quickly as you previously were. I used to do a lot of my runs, including interval runs and long runs, fasted. And it's great to get yourself into a, a, a stage where you're burning fat as a primary fuel source also breaks the muscles down a, a lot more than if you're fueled on those runs. What that really means for us, which is the key factor, is that on the Wednesday, when I really want to hit that interval hard and get as much super compensation as I possibly can, and when I'm hitting that long run hard and getting as much super compensation as I can, I'm able to hit those knowing that there's not going to be the same muscle breakdown as I would have had before, and so I can really hit those and recover fast. So on that Sunday, I can go at it Monday, Tuesday, accelerated recovery with recovery runs and easy runs. And because I've not had as much muscle breakdown, I'm ready to go on the Wednesday again. And what that means is consistency over the training schedule. What also add to nutrition is you've got to get, and again, it's one of those questions that I'll often get is, I'm at the expo, what gels do I need? It's like, what gels have you trained with? And not only what gels have you trained with or what sports drink have you trained with, but how much? So it, this is where it gets a little bit more technical than we just need a pair of shoes and to go out there and run. You need to think about how many grams an hour do you actually need? And we now know in the last sort of five to 10 years and from cyclists and you know, runners who are taking the, the science very, very seriously that we can take a lot more carbs per hour than we originally thought or we, we used to think, historically we thought. And so a big change for me was I used to take a gel every 40 minutes because literally that's what it says on the back of the packet. So one gel is 25 grams of carbohydrate. So one and a half gels or sort of one gel every 40 minutes is 37.5 grams of carbohydrate. When I increase that to 75 grams, so a gel every 20 minutes or a Morton 320 mix every hour, which is 80 grams of carbohydrate, 
my game just took to a, a new level because, again, you've got that energy available, so you're not scared about hitting the wall, so you can really go for it, and you can, you can, you can really aim high because you know you're not going to run out of fuel. And in the rest of your training, again, your interval training and your long run, where you're going to practice this fueling technique, you've not got the same muscle breakdown. So you're able to hit those sessions harder, knowing full well and having lots of confidence that you're going to be recovered in time from the Sunday to the Wednesday to go hard again, and from the Wednesday to the Sunday to go hard again. And again, it's the consistency over the weeks that is going to make you a fast runner. Mental strategies for a runner during the long run. Now, for me, this is one of the key components of the long run. I love getting out there and running with a group and sort of we all go out for a two hour run. It's great, we go for breakfast after, it's a social gathering. When I'm in my specific 13 week training towards a specific event, whether it's 10K or a marathon or an ultra marathon, it's me out alone for 99.9% .9 of the time. And what that does on my long runs is it makes me mentally strong. I'm in my own thoughts but at the same time, when I'm running a long run, especially when it gets to a specific long run or a progressive long run, you're all in. And so it's quite funny when people say, what do you think about when you're out there running? When I'm out there doing a recovery run or an easy run, it's quite meditative. I'm just kind of out there in the nature, in my own thoughts, I'm problem solving, creatively thinking. It's kind of like turning on the rest of my day. It makes me feel really good. When I'm in a, a specific long run or a progressive long run or I've got to hold pace or I'm increasing pace, exactly the same as the interval session, I'm really all in. I'm in complete focus and it's just about doing the right things because I know this is the key component of the week that over the 13 weeks, this is where I'm going to get the super compensation. So this is even more important to get right than the race itself because I know that over the course of the 13 weeks let's say 10 days of that is a taper so you've got 11 11 and a half weeks to really go at it that's 22 sessions including 11 interval sessions and 11 long runs I know that if I do that well and I've done my homework the race will take care of itself because I know that I'm not, if I'm on the start line and I'm racing, as a competitive person, I'm not going to let myself down. I'm going to go for it. So mentally, in those long runs, I'm preparing myself for what that will look like on race day. If that's London, I know there's going to be parts of London where the crowd is absolutely crazy and you can feed off that energy. So I'm looking forward to that. I know there's parts of London Marathon where it goes quiet for a few miles. And you kind of, you've got to dig in, you've got to hold pace, you might need to latch onto a group. I know that I've got to be thinking and visualizing the course as opposed to, or in the way that if I'm going through halfway and I'm off my target time for halfway, and I can see that clearly from the data I'm looking at at my watch, but it's too much for me to step out because it's too windy for me to get on to the next group. I know that I might need to make decisions like that during a race, hold on in this group and then make the time up in the second half. And that can be really useful because people will start coming back to you in the second half. If you're thinking about these things, whilst you're out there running for an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, three hours, the marathon or the event, the race itself is going to feel really comfortable because you've already covered all bases and thought about all things before they actually happen. Running and especially marathon running, ultra marathon, it's like problem solving on the go. And if you've already prepared and planned for those scenarios in your head, so much more easy to cope with. Last thing is recovery. Now, <laughs> Oh, for me, it's really funny because it's almost like a hello magazine. You see people coming out of Starbucks and they hold in the Starbucks coffee, which has probably cost $10, and it's a fashion statement. Exactly the same in the gym or from the track. You see people holding protein shakes, and it's got like a scoop of protein, maybe 25 to 30 grams of protein, and it's blended in water or milk or whatever. What your body needs in those 10 to 15 minutes of you finishing a training session is sugar, it's carbohydrate. So instead of putting the protein in there straight away, which really you need to get in within four hours, so I like to do that in about two and a half to three hours, what your body is screaming out for at that point is to replenish your glycogen supplies. So if that's an extra gel, so be it for convenience. But what I really like is five bananas blended in my almond milk, 
with, with, with cinnamon and with berries and just, I really look forward to it. And it's almost men mentally a nice little reward for myself. It feels like ice cream. It's a nice little mental reward for myself if I've boxed off the, the training session, whether that's interval session or long run. But you want to be recovering like a professional after all your runs and after all your weight training as well. So within 10 to 15 minutes, get into the habit of getting something highly high in carbohydrates into you. I hope you got something from that. If you've got any questions, pop them in the comments below. And as always, I will try to get back to everybody.